Hey there everybody, this is Jordan teaching in tiaras and today I'm doing a super impromptu and very poor quality video <laughs> um, about the new planner that I just purchased and received just a couple weeks ago. Um, as you guys probably know, I've done a relatively extensive review um, comparing Plum Paper to Erin Condren, comparing the large Plum Paper teacher planner to the small Plum Paper teacher planner, and now what I'm going to do is take the small Plum Paper teacher planner, which I absolutely love, this is the one that I use this year, and I'm going to be comparing it to the Berto and Company teacher planner, which I just ran randomly stumbled across on Instagram. What would I do without Instagram? And I decided to purchase it uh, on a whim. And I'm quite satisfied with it overall. And to be honest, this is probably the one that I'm going to be using this year. Before school ended, I did purchase my next year's plum paper planner. Uh, and I'm not sure if I'm going to be using it. I'm, I'm not sure. It's pretty blank. Uh, so far, so I may use it for something else, but this one is the one that I've decided to start decorating, which is a little strange, uh, but I'm really excited to go over this, and I'm just, again, this is a really poor quality video. I was inspired to do this, like, right on the spot, and so hopefully you get something out of this information. And uh, I am really all about promoting things that I enjoy, and hopefully by the end of this video, some of you will be interested in trying out the Berto and Company Planner. Okay, so um, we can get started uh, with the basic differences, and that is the size. Uh, they are relatively the same size. The Berto and Company Planner uh, does come with a pretty sturdy coil. The coil is a little bit bigger and a little bit bendier. Haven't had any issues with that. Um, overall, I think because this one is hardcover, uh, it tends to be just a little bit more bulky than the <laughs> than the Plum Paper Teacher Planner, uh, depending on what extras you add into this. Uh, which leads me to my next comparison. The Plum Paper Teacher Planner has room for a lot of customizations, and we can talk about a bunch of those. I mean, you can watch my other videos to talk about the customizations, but it's got a bunch of things that you can add into it, a bunch of things that you can, I mean, take out of it if you don't want it. You can customize your subjects for the teacher planner like section. You can add in uh, fitness sections, extra notes pages, to-do lists, all of that stuff you can add into here within a certain number of pages. Uh, for the Berto and Company Planner, uh, what you see is what you get. You may not customize the cover, you can't customize what goes inside of it, you can't customize the tabs, and to be honest, once you see the inside of this planner, you might be okay with that. Um, I am very pleased with the inside of this planner. I did not necessarily feel the need to change anything or add anything or take anything out anyway. I do wish there was a customizable option for this little area right here, maybe just with the year or my name or something like that. But overall, I'm still, I, I mean, look, it's cute, right? And I think there's four or five other covers that you can get and they are all equally as cute. I recently just did a giveaway for one of those and the girl who won the giveaway um, selected it's got like a bunch of little teacher icons on I don't know go look it up it's really really cute uh, but anyway um, which one do I feel is more sturdy which one do I feel is probably not going to fall apart as easily uh, I might say plum paper just because of the protective cover um, I haven't really carted these around very much um, I haven't really used them very much to say the least. Um, the only bad thing about the Plum Paper Teacher Planner is that you probably can't see it like I can, but the protective covering, which is really nice and sturdy, it does get really scratched up and unfortunately it just it just collects scratches, uh, honestly. But I do feel like this one is a little bit more, if I go like this, uh, there isn't anything that's like gonna fall out or anything. It's nice, and, like it, everything is, you know, wrapped around the coil really nicely. It's really sturdy. This one, still the same thing. Um, I just feel like the hard cover makes it, ironically enough, the hard cover makes it a little bit less, um, less sturdy. Anyway, getting into the uh, 
Berto and Company planner. Some similarities uh, here. The Berto and Company planner does have two pockets, which I actually almost missed when I purchased it. You probably can't see it, barely see it on this page because it's actually right in here. Um, there are paper, not reinforced or anything. I don't expect them to last very long, but there's one inside the front cover and then there's also one in, whoa, one inside the back cover, which is really nice. Um, anything you put in there obviously will have to be folded, just like it had to be folded in the uh, plum paper teacher planner one. Uh, my plum, this is my old planner. Uh, my plum paper one did end up ripping. Uh, it did not last the whole year. It's um, ripping at the, pew, it's ripping at the um, coil as well. Then again, I put a lot of junk in it, and so that's something that I can expect. Um, once you open this planner, uh, well, once you open this planner, you'll see this. I'm going to cover up my information right there. Basically, it's just your school information. The stickers are extra. I did go ahead and uh, decorate that already. So the stickers are extra. Um, it says this year's duties and then committees, so optional. Um, really like that. That's cute. And then it gets into basically the teachery stuff. Am I sitting too high? Do I need to put this down? How do I put this down? There we go. Uh, so then it gets into all of the teachery stuff. Now, um, the plum paper teacher planner has uh, different stuff like special dates, you know, things to remember at the beginning of every single month. It's got like a goal page. I'm pretty sure that this remains the same in the new one. Yes, it does. So it remains the same in the new one. Uh, the only issue here, I can't really make an accurate comparison between the Plum Paper Teacher Planner because I actually opted not to get the Teacher Planner. So what that means is like there's no space to actually write down lesson plans in this particular one. I decided to just go with a regular calendar and after the regular calendar all there is is just notes pages and then it switches to the next month. So I can't really make an accurate comparison between this one, the Berto and Company Planner, to the Teacher Planner. Even with my last year's uh, Plum Paper Planner, the one that is all kind of messed up, I ended up taking out the lesson plan pages. I just ended up not using them. I went with planbook.com. I tried that online platform out for a while and that one kind of stuck with me. And so I just basically use my calendar as a personal school work social calendar or whatever. Anyway, back to Berto and Company. Um, these pages are basically the cutest things I have ever seen. Um, this is designed by Jose Cortez and oh my gosh, like he does an amazing job really like speaking my design language. These are, this is like Erin Condren cute without being over the top. Do you know what I mean? That was the only issue that I ever had with Erin Condren was that it was like it was almost too much. Now, this might be too much in your book, but this is like, this is, I don't know, this is just my design style. So I'm gonna take you through some of the pages. So we've got daily schedule and special schedule. I don't know who calls them specials, but I mean, I do, and I thought that was really cool that it was in here, and it's even got an A week and a B week option. Um, going forward, it's got a school directory and safety procedures. Look at how cute the pages are. Like, ugh, I want to design something like this, right? Um, we've got my favorite substitutes and an early dismissal schedule. Next up is classroom volunteers and field trip information. Not quite sure if I will use those pages, but to each their own. And we've got my passwords and a student roster. The student roster on this side comes equipped with 30 names, uh, so if you are departmentalized like I am, that might be a problem. I guess you could technically, you know, maybe split this, split this into two columns and just double up on the columns. Anyway, that's the only bad thing about these particular planners is that it doesn't really take into contact that classes are departmentalized. But anyway, 
Uh, moving on, the very first tab that you come to is the students tab. Uh, they're nice and thick. The tabs are reinforced, but they're not as well reinforced as the uh, Berto, or excuse me, as the plum paper ones are. I, I do have one that is ripping already uh, that I may have to tape down just to make sure that it stays kind of together, but either way. Um, the first tab is the students tab, so we've got happy birthday and we've got transportation and allergies. Again, I have no complaints with how this was designed. I think it was awesome. Seating chart, I never use these pages because my seating chart changes all the time. Uh, let's see, student passwords uh, for websites. There are a total of 30, 30 little slots that just it just looks like a big chart again uh, departmentalization have to get creative with that after that we've got several pages of student info that look like this I would imagine that there is 30 of those as well might have to get creative with that too but it's just got name address parent guardian emergency contact etc etc I will definitely be using those pages uh, and then conference schedule. Uh, I kind of do my conferences a different way, but I'm, I'm not quite sure if I'll use this page, but still really cute. Uh, the next tab that you come to, another kind of reinforced tab, is the parents tab. Uh, so the, let's see, we've got a parent teacher conference log. I guess I would probably use this for those random conferences that you have in the middle of the year, not necessarily for the ones that are assigned throughout the year, but there's several pages of that, lots of pages. Uh, in fact, that's all there is. <laughs> that's all there is in that section, so it's basically a way to keep track of, you know, parent-teacher communication. After that is the checklist section. This is another complication for... Um, you know, classes that are departmentalized, but I also had the same issue with the plum paper planner. I believe actually the issue was, yeah, the issue with the plum paper planner was that the small one that is, is that there were, there was only 28 spaces in the checklist and I had, my biggest class was 30. Uh, this one, thankfully enough, does have 30 spaces. Um, this is the checklist section, so names down the side across you could do one class here one class here I don't know you'd have to get kind of creative with it obviously but the good thing is is that this one does have 30 spots which is something I'm very thankful for there are several pages of that not enough pages to do a whole year and uh, unfortunately you cannot add any pages so there would be no way that you could do a full year um, the nifty thing here, uh, also in the checklist section, is that it has assessment data. Uh, I'm not sure how I would use this, but I think this would be really fun to keep track of math unit tests, um, DRAs, I don't know, get creative with it. Again, there's 30 slots, and then there's space at the top to write the particular assessment, if you see that. Uh, after that is where the months start. I'm only going to go over August and then I'm just going to show you the calendars for the rest of the year because they're really, really cute. They're, oh my gosh, this is like the best part of the planner. Anyways, so in the Berto & Company planner, after the assessment data, the checklist section, um, it starts with August. I prefer my planners to start with July. Um, just because I have a life in July. I would like to have the calendar in July, but you know, anyways, what I should have done in retrospect is, okay, so you see that August, whoa, there we go. August is the first tab that I'm about to get to, and July is the very last tab down here in the back. What I should have done in retrospect is labeled this July tab as 2017 like the, like no, like in a couple days like 2017 and then I should have just used July as this July instead of labeling it as 2018's July. I will do that next time but anyway I wish there was a July before August. So uh, before every single month there is a really nifty to-do list uh, and then after the 
reinforced tab, there is a calendar. Uh, similar to Erin Condren, uh, there is space for you to actually write in the dates. Uh, just be really careful when you write in the dates because you may, um, I'll show you an example of a couple months where I ran out of space. Um, I just, I just didn't do it right. Anyway, look, look at this. Look at how cute this is. I, I mean, I've, I've, I've started to label some stuff like down here, but this is adorable. I love this layout. The boxes are kind of small, but you know, I mean, it's a small planner. Um, what was I gonna say? The font is cute. The colors are cute. Uh, it starts on a Monday, which I find awkward, uh, just because I don't start my week on a Monday normally. I, I start it on a Sunday, but they've given you Saturday and Sunday little, um, little boxes for Saturday and Sunday. I wish there was a way to make them bigger, but I understand why they are not as big as the other, you know, boxes. So I just went ahead and uh, started, you know, with number one, and then whatever date that was out of the month, I just put a little sticker there. Uh, after the monthly spread uh, comes like, a, well, actually, in August, there are no lesson planning pages uh, because I tore them out. <laughs> so I tore out my August lesson planning pages because we start in September. But if you start in August, there would be lesson planning pages after that. Instead, mine just has a notes page before it gets to uh, September. This is just a little sticker. So this is what the real month looks like. So again, September um, is just to-dos. And then you get into the month, which is different. The style is different, and this is absolutely adorable. I've started labeling it with stickers that I found at Michael's. Um, yeah, so after the monthly spread is a notes spread, just similar to what I showed you, and then starts the lesson planning uh, pages. So here's what they look like. So you've got Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday down the side. Uh, I flipped my planner phew, like this to write the date in. Uh, up at the top in the little apple is where the week number goes and then subjects go across the top. Um, I haven't quite figured out what I'm going to do with that yet, but taking a look at the boxes, I'm so sorry for the poor quality. The boxes in comparison with the uh, Plum Paper Teacher Planner are just about the same. Um, I cannot, I mean, the size difference is pretty negligible. All in all, they're small. Um, the reason that I ended up, um, I, part of the reason I ended up not using the Plum Paper Teacher Planner was because the boxes were too small. Um, and I want to make it work. <laughs> I do want to make the smaller boxes work. I want to come up with some sort of shorthand in order to fit everything that I need into these little boxes. Um, so yeah, that's what that looks like. And then after we go through, there are four, there's one week, two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, and then a last notes page. This is the one thing that I have to gripe about about this particular planner. The four week lesson planning spread is not enough. And the reason that I say this is because depending on what day of the month that the month actually starts on, um, you may, instead of having four weeks, you'll have some extra days in that fifth week in the same month. So unfortunately, the four spreads of lesson planner, like pages, is just not enough. I wish there was a fifth page for any of those extra days. Do you kind of get what I'm saying? Now, the good thing is, is that it does work out. Um, a lot of times what I had to do was spill over into the next month. Let me see if there's an example. Um, so for, yeah, so for September, my, no, it didn't happen in September. Uh, maybe it happened in October. Yeah, so it happened in October. Um, October, the last, yeah, 
October, the last Friday on the last spread is the 27th. However, October continues into that next week with like the 31st. Um, so I did, ha I had to like, I had to put it into November. Do, do you kind of get what I'm saying? Um, either way, I wish there was a fifth page, bottom line. Um, so I'm gonna show you the rest of the monthly spreads um, and then finish up here. So this is October. Yay! Really cute. Um, then you get that those notes pages and then the lesson planning pages. This is November. Kind of like a leaf pattern. This is December. This is, <laughs> I didn't even really notice what this one was. This is like snowflakes and mittens in the background. It's really cute. Uh, January is more snowflakes. It's like light blue. I'm so sorry, the quality's so bad. Um, February is hearts, pink. March is, I, it looks like flowers in the background, green. April looks like clouds and rain. <laughs> kind of cute in the background. May looks like multicolored flowers in the background there and leaves. June uh, starting, well, what, sun? Suns, summery stuff. And then July, again, I wish I had made this 2017, but oops, this is like anchors and flip flops and stuff like that. So yeah, once you get to July, um, there are the notes pages, but there, I, now I can't remember. No, I don't think there, I don't think July came with any lesson planning pages. I don't think so it just ends with the note pages and then the very last reinforced tab is just several more notes pages that look just like that um, at the very back again there's the folder and then it just says thank you very much for purchasing a Berto and company planner we hope you enjoy it um, we'd love to hear your feedback in our Etsy store follow us on Instagram there it is so again whew, uh, basic overall I love this planner I think it is so cute um, I would not change anything about the design aspect of it I have a fond appreciation for how um, how clean uh, the plum paper planner is you know the the it, I mean, you can't get much cleaner than this, right? Um, I like a little bit of color, um, but don't like to go over the... For some reason, this is not over the top for me. I don't feel that this is over the top. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'm really looking forward to using this. My only, you know, small complaint would be that I wish July was up front uh, instead of in the back. And I also wish that there were five lesson planning pages instead of just five lesson planning spreads behind each month rather than just four. Another note about this, this particular planner, um, I think in my school district we have like 42 weeks of school or something like that. This particular planner does not, it doesn't cover all 42 weeks and if you put your Christmas break, your spring break, into into these lesson planning pages right here if you just label them and either tape them off or label them and just don't write in them you're gonna run out of space so my suggestion to you is to make sure that you completely eliminate don't even write the weeks that you are not here um, or you're not at school uh, just I think in December mine skips from December something to right to January so it skips an entire week if you do include those you will not have enough space uh, in the lesson planner I believe my lesson planner ends at June 8th uh, I go to school after June 8th, although I know that there are plenty of school systems out there that end before, <laughs> that end, sorry, it's my bunny, that end before June 8th. Uh, so, again, just make sure that you maximize the space, plan out what you're going to write and where you're going to write it before you, um, you know, before you mess up. I'm pretty sure there's a spot in here that I accidentally messed up because 
the planner itself, the monthly spread, starts on a Monday. I got myself tripped up because I was looking at the exact wrong thing. Uh, so I had to, yeah, I, ha I totally messed up and so I had to put some stickers on here to remedy that situation. But again, whew, I have talked a whole bunch about this planner. Overall, out of 10 stars, I would probably give it an eight. There are things that are like really simple things and really silly things that I think could, I just hit myself in the face, um, that I think could make this planner like pretty darn close to a 10. Um, but like, as it is, no customizations, um, you know, no options to like delete anything or anything like that. That's a pretty solid eight for, you know, what I want to use it for. Um, I hope this review was helpful, and if you have any questions specifically about the Berto and Company Planner, please send me a message either on Instagram or leave me a comment down below on the YouTube channel, and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. Happy planning! Actually, don't plan. It's still June. <laughs> but when comes July and August, happy planning, and uh, I hope to see you guys later for maybe another review if I find other things to review. <laughs> Anyways, uh, have a great one, and I will see you later. Bye!